My idea is that, um, that the capitalist economy relies on forms of public ordering by public powers. It relies on a public legal system to guarantee property rights, to enforce contracts, to adjudicate disputes. It relies on repressive powers of states to put down uh, crime and rebellion and, and so on. It, through, in, in later stages of capitalism's history, the economy has needed forms of crisis management at the economic level. It has needed states to supply public goods, to ensure the money supply, and so on and so forth. So I don't think you can have a capitalist economy in a functioning way without a public power. However, what's distinctive about capitalism is that it separates uh, this uh, special sphere called the economy from the state, from public power. You don't have any such separation in earlier societies, in feudalism, in ancient societies. That's distinctive of capitalism. So you have, at one and the same time, a uh, separation of polity from economy, you have the dependence of economy on polity, and you have a certain kind of disavowal that these public functions have any real quantitative, monetized value. Now, from my point of view, that's a perfect storm of tension and possible contradiction. And I would say that throughout the history of capitalism in each of its phases, you have had the, the power, the push, the dynamism of the economy with its drive toward endless accumulation, eating away at the very public powers that it also needs. And to me, that's what I call capitalism's political contradiction. I think it's built into this peculiar institutional arrangement. And so I think every phase of capitalism must deal with this tendency to political crisis, this political contradiction, and find some way or another to deal with it. And how it is dealt with it differs in each phase of capitalism. Today, I would say we're in a very acute crisis situation where there's been a systematic undermining of the capacities of public ordering that the economy needs, uh, but is, as I say, systematically destabilized. In an article just last year, you wrote that despite this development you just uh, described, there's not yet a crisis of political legitimation. This year, we've seen the Brexit vote in Britain, uh, the election of Trump in the US, and next year, maybe the Mali independence of Omar Tehran might win the presidential election in France. Um, these developments seem to indicate that quite a number of people do not feel represented by the current political elites. Is this now the legitimation crisis you've been writing about? Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I would say that um, I, if I were writing that article today, I think I would, it, I would have a, a different uh, conclusion. I think that the shock waves produced by Brexit uh, in the UK and by the election of Trump in the US signal the, um, yeah, the, the crumbling, let's say, of the neoliberal consensus, which was always um, at its heart an Anglo-American axis. Uh, so this is in the very heart of, of neoliberalism, a breakdown, uh, a, a, a basic um, break out of, uh, of revulsion, of anger, of reaction against neoliberalism. And if, in the United States, if you put the Trump vote together with the strength of the Bernie Sanders campaign on the Democratic side during the primary, uh, that's a very powerful uh, combination uh, in, in the sense, of course, their Trump and Sanders are a very different uh, diagnoses and responses and proposed solutions, but, but they are both premised on a rejection of neoliberal hegemony. And I think in the US, the, on the one side, the Republican Party, the Republican establishment lost control of its voters, and it, it, the Democrats came very close also to losing the establishment, its control as well. They had to 
bring out every trick in the book, in, in a sense, to uh, keep the Clinton uh, campaign more or less on track, and in the end, uh, we're unable to win the election. So yes, I would say that is a, a true legitimation crisis. So now the hardest question at the end, what are possible ways out of this particular strand of the crisis of capitalism? Right. That is the hardest question of all. And um, I mean, I, I would say if you are just want to speculate about what are the possible scenarios that could follow now, that there are several. Um, I, of course, everybody is going to watch the Trump administration to see whether he ends up, let's say, being captured back into some form of Republican Party neoliberal orthodoxy, and in that sense, abandon the voters who put him there. That's one scenario. Another scenario is that he actually uh, tries to develop some uh, new kind of uh, right-wing populist governance that involves a lot of infrastructural spending, a lot of job creation, uh, uh, and, and so on to satisfy the, the working class base, uh, but and, and abrogates the free trade agreements. Um, this um, involves a, a lot of complications because uh, it's, it, as bad as the neoliberal globalization has been for people in the manufacturing se sectors of US and UK and, and France and so on and other places, um, the, the alternative that right-wing populism re represents is also very dangerous because it involves national protectionism. And this starts to look suspiciously like the 1920s, which sets the the, the world on the course of trade wars and possible real hot wars and so on. Uh, so I don't think there's any solution that lies there. Um, Bernie Sanders, I would say, began to articulate some outlines of a possible left-wing solution, but frankly, um, there are many on clarities and question marks. It certainly was not a fully fleshed out idea, uh, certainly of how the foreign policy or the international arena would work. But I would say something like the idea of alter globalization, not national protectionism, not neoliberal globalization, but another kind of internationalism or globalism, if you like, uh, globalism from below is the only real solution. Whether, uh, what exactly that means, how it develops programmatically, uh, very hard to say, um, and whether it remains within capitalism or not is another big question. One possibility is that um, some new, more progressive form of capitalism develops I would say that capitalism has shown a remarkable capacity to reinvent itself in the face of crisis in the past, and you'd have to be pretty stupid to rule that out altogether. Um, but another possibility is that the, the various political strands become so unruly, uh, and the economic and ecological and social reproductive crisis, crises become, political crises become so severe that um, the solutions no longer lie within capitalism but in some alternative to it. And in that case, the question is whether it's a, a benign and emancipatory alternative or some sort of barbaric regressive one, and I, I don't think I'm in any position to, <laughs> to make any predictions about what will happen. Um, I know that my hope is for um, a, uh, a, a benign emancipatory alternative to capitalism, or failing that, at least a progressive form of capitalism, uh, but I'm, it's very hard to, to say what will happen or even 
what the concrete outlines 